YouTube channel One Racing Race All Human. Today is Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. This appears to be racially motivated. Mm. Poor children. A new video has emerged from a shocking incident at Sesame Place, a children's theme park in Pennsylvania. In the original video, the Muppet Rosita appeared to be brushing off two young black girls reaching out for a hug. And according to the girl's family who released this new video, this angle shows the performer greeting other children right next to them. We should note that NBC did not edit this video. The theme park said in an initial statement that the performer's no gesture was not directed at the girls. They also said the Muppets costume made it difficult to see at low levels, and they sometimes miss hug requests from guests. But after facing intense backlash, the park released an additional statement Thursday apologizing to the family and explaining that theme park employees will undergo bias training. Sesame Place uh, declined to comment on the new video. To be clear, Sesame Workshop has a licensing agreement with Sesame Place, but it's not directly responsible for the theme park, which is operated by SeaWorld Parks and Entertainment. Joining me now is Jody Brown, the mother and aunt of the two young girls, and her attorney, B. Ivory Lamar. Ms. Brown, uh, Ms. Lamar, thank you both for joining me here today. I want to just get your response to the initial statement, which was just odd to me because it's, you know, they said that the characters have a hard time seeing at low levels. Well, all children are at low yeah, levels, levels, so I didn't understand that. What was your response to that? Um, I thought it was excuses. Um, I also thought it was very disrespectful. Um, like they were just kind of trying to brush me off. In the video, you also see that the character looks at the children before he gives that no hand gesture. Right. So for me, um, it was just not genuine and disrespectful. So the subsequent mm -hmm. statement seemed to try to address that, made an apology to you and the family. Was it sufficient? No, because I don't believe it was genuine. I believe they're just putting out statements due to the um, how viral the video has gone. Right. So Ms. Lamar, what, what is what do you guys want to have happen? What what do we want Sesame Place to do? Well, I think Charles, it's very important that there be, there is accountability when it comes to corporations. I mean, what we've seen is excuses over accountability, and there's just no room for that, especially when it deals with racism, and most definitely when it involves our children. There's several different um, demands that we've made. Number one, we called for the immediate termination of that individual. There's no room. There has to be a no tolerance policy in our country when it comes to racism. We've also asked for an authentic and genuine apology. What we see is the company just responding when they're almost compelled to, right. when it's damage control. So again, we have to have you know, the company take more of a proactive step, and they need to do right by these children. I mean, they, they, these children have suffered immense harm as a result of it. I mean, they will forever be known as the children who were dismissed or rejected by a Sesame Street character. They need to be compensated and need to have therapy allotted for them and so forth. So again, this is, we can't just let this go by without any um, substantial changes. If the theme park does not do those things, are you contemplating a lawsuit? Oh, of course. We've said from the very beginning that all options will always remain on the table. I mean, we don't want to have these two children engaged in litigation, but if that's what we need to do to effectuate change in this country, that's what we have to do. Now, you know, Sesame Street, Ms. Brown, was started to champion diversity. I grew up mm -hmm. <laughs> watching Sesame Street. Uh -huh. uh, and, not, and, and even though that program and, and the you know kind of parent company that program is not directly associated with this, they have a licensing agreement mm -hmm. with it, it is still the characters, right? So does, does what happened to your daughter and your niece change your perception of the, 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 the kind of universe that is Sesame? Um, it does, only because even though it may not be, you know, directly associated, they should definitely still be having their characters trained to um, act and behave in a certain way. Um, and what those characters did were unacceptable. So, uh, Mr. Lamar, this has sparked a lot of conversation. I'm sure you're getting more videos. We've seen more videos online. Are you thinking of taking action broader? Is there some sort of class action that may be contemplated, including all of these incidents? 
That's very possible. I will tell you this. Um, just the investigation of this one incident has really worn on our resources. I mean, it's um, it's been a tremendous response. Uh, just the amount of videos, individuals calling. I've received over 150 uh, phone calls with families alleging similar discrimination at Sesame Place. So again, um, this there is this uh, a large uh, reason for there to be outrage, and we have to have meaningful corrections. So, Julie, I don't want to let you go without checking on the, mm-hmm. you know, the girls. You know, how are they doing? Mm-hmm. And how did how you know what was your initial response to this happening to them? Did they even understand what was happening? My response first as a mom is I'm upset because I'm trying to figure out how does a character do such a thing. Um, you know, they're little children where, you know, in the park they see other characters coming that they're trying to look, look to. And then after um, after it all happened, it's more like, mom, like, what did I do? You know, they were sad. They were disappointed. Um, so for me as a mom now, I'm just trying to protect them. You know, they're not okay. No child should experience that. No child should have to have trigger points where they're asking, like, you know, mom, why did the character do this? Or mom, you know, I was disappointed. So now I'm just trying to, you know, love on them some more. And I want to have them, you know, have new experiences to kind of take their mind away from what's going on. I'm very curious as to what you actually said. I remember the first time a cab passed Mm -hmm. me and my children by, and they were like, what? Like, why? Mm-hmm. Like, and it picked up someone a little bit further down, and they were just aghast. They couldn't figure mm-hmm. it out. Mm-hmm. And I had to figure out how to explain to a child that it has nothing to do with mm-hmm. you, right? Uh, so what did you say to the girls when you, they were asking questions? Um, you let them know that, you know, not everyone is a bad person. Um, love outweighs hate every time. So this one person may be bad, but everyone is not. So, and given the love and support they have received after, you know, I'm showing them, like, there's so many people who stand behind you on this. And, you know, I try to tell them not to let this one thing, um, you know, weigh them down. But there's six, you know, so it's kind of hard to. So my job now is to just continue to protect their innocence. And please buy them an ice cream cone. For okay. They always seem to do something. I will. Uh, <laughs> Jody Brown, FBI Villa Mark, thank you so much for joining thank me today. I really appreciate us. it. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. And coming up, we'll take a peek at a new documentary focusing on the eviction crisis birth during the pandemic. Thank you for being on your channel. One race, one race, all human. Today is Saturday, July 23rd, 2022.